These are some of the flowers that I've created over the past couple of months. And today we're going to look at how to recreate this setup and have a procedural flower modeling setup that can then be animated into these blooming flowers. We're going to go through it step by step, talk a little bit about the theory behind how it all works. And in the end, we're going to render this in Karma. Here's a vague process overview of how this flower setup works. This is what we're going to go through today. We will look at the petal shape and how to connect that with a petal skeleton that automatically adjusts to the shape of the petal. Then we're going to use that skeleton to deform and animate the single petal. In the following video, we're going to look at how to turn this petal into a full final flower. We're going to drop down a line and we'll drop down a resample straight after. We'll leave this at all defaults, except we'll enable this curve view attribute. Then we're going to sweep. On the sweep, we'll set the surface shape to ribbon. We'll go to UVs and attributes and enable compute UVs. We'll disable length weighted UVs. If you want to see what this does, it basically takes the UVs from this very long strip going way beyond the zero to one UV space, and it puts it back into back into the zero to one space. This is nice for texturing later on. So we'll just increase the width here. And this sweep node is what we'll use to drive the shape of the petal. So enable apply scale along curve. You can see how this allows you to basically shape a petal and we're ready to move on. So we want to group the bottom points of the shape, these points right here. So we'll drop down a group expression node, set it to points, name it bottom, and we enabled a curve view attribute. So the bottom points will have a curve view value of zero. So in this in this expression, we'll type f at curve view equals equals zero. And now all the bottom points are grouped. We also wanna make another group, this time just a group node. And this group is all the boundary points, all these edge points here. So we wanna set this to points as well, name it edges, disable the base group and enable include by edges and enable unshared edges. Now we have the edges group. Then we want to drop down a distance along geometry. We basically wanna create a gradient going from this boundary edge into the center of the shape. We will set the start points to the edges. We'll disable this output attribute and enable output mask and set the radius from maximum distance. Control middle mouse button on this node and click this mask name and we enable this visualizer here. We can see that we now have a nice gradient going from the outside of the shape into the middle of the shape. Now we'll drop down a remesh to get this shape to become nice even triangles. What we want to avoid is this here at the top where there's a lot of pinching. So we'll remesh it into some even triangles. We'll set this value of the target size to 0 0.075. And we can see now that we still have some weird pinching up here in the top. So we'll drop down a fuse node and set this snap distance to 0 0.0125. There's still a little bit of jankiness here. So we'll just increase this a little bit. We can now move on to shape this bulging dome shape from this petal. I'll do this with an attribute wrangle. We will say that float amount, this is the displacement amount, is equal to a channel called amount. Now we can press this button here to get our channels out into this user interface. And we can now slide this around. It doesn't do anything at the moment. So we'll say at p.x minus equals amount. So right now this just translates the shape in negative x, which isn't really helpful. But if we type amount times equals channel ramp, we'll give it a name, we'll name it edge mask, comma, f at center mask. We slide this up. We need to rename this to center mask if we want this. Of course, these names are arbitrary, but I like to keep mask unused so I can use that for temporary actions later on. So now nothing happens, but if we click this button here again, we get this ramp and we can see that something happens. We'll start out by flipping this ramp. Now you can shape this as you want and of course control the amount. I'll set this amount to 0.1. We'll name this wrangle dome shape so we know what it's doing. And now we're done with the pedal. For now. So we'll drop down a null and name that out uncaptured petal. This is so we can reference it in the network later on and easily find it. In the next section, we're going to create a kinefix rig for this petal so we can animate it. We'll drop down a line. We'll give it six points. 
we'll make another line which will set to a length of 0.5 and we'll set the direction to one in Z. So it looks like this. We'll give it nine points and we'll take this line and put it into a copy two points. And we'll copy it onto the points of the initial line. So if we look at these together, we can see that we have this spine and we have these arms going out from the shape. Now we want arms on either side. So we'll take this line and copy it to points again. Then we'll drop down a group node from both of these, copy to points. We'll set it to points and we'll name them left, this one on the left side, and we'll name the one on the right side to right. Right now, they're still in the exact same position. So we'll just drop down a transform after this right arm and we'll scale it minus one instead. So now it's flipped. So now we need to set some orientations for these bones. So we'll drop down an orientation along curves and we'll start out with the spine. Disable the Y and Z axis and we'll enable this three by three transform. That's the attribute that KinFX uses to recognize the orientations of the joints. And we'll add some additional rotations here. It's basically just to make sure that all of the joints are oriented in a similar way. So we'll enable this apply roll or twist set it to 90 and we'll apply pitch as well and set that to 90. We can visualize this attribute as well if we just control middle mouse again and press transform and we can now see the transform so we can see them without these rotations and with the rotations. So we get this green y-axis pointing upwards, the z-axis pointing along z and the x-axis pointing along x. Now we want to do the same thing for the left side. So we'll just drop down an orientation along curve. And just like before, we will disable these two and enable the three by three transform. We'll leave everything else to default. Now this right-hand side is a little bit weird. We will take the same settings as on the left-hand side, but we'll drop it before our copy to points. Take these three nodes here, alt drag to merge. And if we disable the visualizer here, we now have the skeleton with orientations on it. And you can see each of these are all oriented in a similar way. And the two arms are mirrored. We just need a little bit more here on the spine. If we drop down a resample, we'd like a few more points on the spine. So we'll set this maximum segments to two and we'll set resample by polygon edge. This will subdivide the line. Then we'll drop down a group and we'll group these points and name them spine. We also want to drop down a group range to make a group for the tip and we'll group the top five points. So if we look at this now, we have the bottom five points, we want the top five and we'll name this group tip. After this merge, we'll drop a fuse node. Now with this fuse node, it's actually important which order these lines are going into the merge because if this was changed around, you'll see that these connection points act differently. So we want it to be spine first, then left, then right. Then we'll drop down a rig doctor to initialize our Kinefix rig. Press this initialize transforms button. We can also drop down a visualize rig node. I'll just drop down another group because I want to group this root point as well. So I'll name this group root point and we'll say at name equals point zero because this rig doctor creates a name attribute for every single point. That's what a Kinefix rig is. It's a name attribute and a three by three transform attribute. And we'll drop down a null, name this out petal skeleton. If we look at these two together, the petal skeleton and the uncaptured petal, we can see that the petal skeleton doesn't really look much like the petal. To fix that, we're going to use the UVs that we have on the petal to deform our petal skeleton onto this shape. So to do this, we're going to take these two nulls and reference them in object merges. I like to do this to stay organized. So I'll take this uncaptured petal, control C, put it into this object merge here. I'll name this get uncaptured petal and I'll make this black as well. And I'll duplicate this just once and this time get the petal skeleton. For the uncaptured petal, I want to attribute promote the UV attribute from a vertex class to the point. Then I'll make a wrangle and I'll say that V at P is equal to V at UV. I'll put the template flag on this wrangle here. And from the petal skeleton, we'll drop down a match size. We just want to set all of these to min. Now we'll transform 
this uncaptured petal minus 90 in the Y. So now these two line up, then I'll drop down an attribute wrangle to do the UV deformation. We'll do this with the XYZ dist and prim UV functions. First, we need to define a primitive number. Then we need to define a vector UVW and we'll say XYZ dist one, which we don't have anything in our first input right now, but we'll do that in a second. One comma V at P comma prim num comma uvw and now we'll say that v at p equals to prim uv two comma p comma prim num comma prim uvw this all evaluates to zero and everything goes to world center so we'll take this transform here and input it into the second input of the wrangle and the uncaptured pedal into the third input and now if we look at the pedal and the rig they're aligned we can drop down this visualize rig again to see that we actually flipped around the orientations of the rig here. So to sort that out, we just need to go into this pause is UV and above this line, we'll add a line saying V at UV dot X equals to one minus V at UV dot X. So that just flips the X value on this rig around. So I'll rename this wrangle to UV deform. Now we've named this uncaptured pedal because we actually want to capture which part of this rig is supposed to be deformed this petal shape. So we'll continue with our work here. We'll drop down an object merge, control C this deformed petal skeleton into that one, drop down a bone capture proximity with our petal shape as the first input and our rig as the second input. I found for this topology in the weighting tab, a value of four in drop off and 12 in max influences worked quite well. But if you enable this point coloring color by capture region, and we'll just after this capture proximity, put down a null, and out captured pedal. Now we're going to make a prototype of how we'll use this rig to deform and shape our pedals on just a single pedal. So we'll create a few object merges again. One needs to get this captured pedal, and the other needs to get this deformed pedal skeleton. So now that we have these two, we'll drop down a bone deform. And we can see that this requires three inputs. It requires the geometry to deform, that's our pedal. It requires a rest point transforms, that's our skeleton in this rest shape here. And then it requires a deform point transforms. And we'll just plug the skeleton in again. So now we can see nothing happens as expected because we didn't actually do anything to the skeleton. So where we wanna do all our shaping is in this third input here. So if we drop down a rig pose, press this tool button, we can see that we get all of these handles. You could press a single point and you can start rotating it. And we can see now that our pedal deforms. This is great, but there's a reason that we made these groups up here. We essentially want to make one rig pose for the root group, one for the tip, one for the spine, and one for the arms. This one will be rig pose root, and we'll just disable this group here, and we'll call it root. And now it doesn't make as much sense to do it in the viewport, so we'll do it in this parameters window. We can slide around this rotate set, and we can rotate around our root. Drop down another rig pose, add a transformation. This one we'll do for the spine group, and you get this nice curling motion. And we'll drop down another rig pose, name the group tip, and we can see that we can rotate just the tip of this pedal now. One last rig pose. And for this one, we just wanna say that it's anything that isn't the spine. And we want to rotate these in the Y axis. So now we've deformed our pedal into this shape, so the growth animation that we want to do is all driven by a node called skeleton blend. So we'll drop this here where we'll take this static skeleton as the first input. And in the second input bar here, we'll put our deformed skeleton and we'll put that into our bone deform now and we'll see what it does. If we slide this weight around, we can see that our pedal can now animate between these two poses. And later on down the line, we're going to subdivide the shape, which makes it much smoother as well. And now this is where you can go in and play around with this capture proximity. What's the drop off? And what's the max influences? It's all a balance between getting a nice and smooth shape and also getting a shape that 
somewhat conforms to the skeleton that you've made. So now I just went and duplicated this setup here over to the side. So I made two different versions of the skeleton. I made one where it's in this kind of flower bud pose and one where, where it's in this bloomed petal pose. I just keyframed the skeleton blend from frame one to frame 48 between zero and one. We can see we get this nice animation here. We go down to a subdivide and we just play this out. We get this nice blooming motion. 